Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Mod Showcase series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode, I'll be featuring the OLDD Apollo uh, package, which is now in version 1.2, updated just today, by the way. And so let's fire it up. Now, we've got some uh, pre-built craft files to help us out. I had MJ is the MechJeb one, but I don't need MechJeb slapped on the side. In this install, I've got MechJeb installed, and I've got a config that adds it automatically to the command pod, so we don't have to have the unsightly box on the side. So I don't have to load that one. I'll load this one up. Important to note, for some reason, the current 1.2 package doesn't include the craft files, so you might want to get the... Well, I hope you got the 1.1.1 version, so which has the ships in it. Um, and I trust that the mod maker will uh, will produce a new zip file with the craft files built in because it's a little bit tricky to put it all together as you'll soon see. So let's uh, bring it out here. And here it is. Now uh, important to note that this is a Saturn V built for Kerbin. So it has some significant differences that I'll be talking about in relation to the real Saturn V. But uh, first I need to talk about some of the mod dependencies. It requires raster prop monitor for the interior view. So I've got raster prop monitor 0.16. Uh, I highly recommend a Kerbal Joint Reinforcement and the mod maker does so as well. Uh, TAC Life Support is recommended and I've got that installed. There are other recommended mods that I did not install including uh, parachutes for the Kerbals. Uh, not for the modules, for the Kerbals themselves and also the reflection plugin. The reflection plugin stro uh, slowed my computer down to a crawl. Um, well, specifically Kerbal Space Program down to a crawl. Uh, it was completely unusable, so I, I don't know what was up with that. Uh, maybe it's just the way my computer was handling it, but there was some issue there. So uh, be wary of the reflection plugin if you suddenly get like frame rates that you have never seen before, like uh, it's not frames per second, but seconds per frame. I recommend dumping the reflection plugin first. Okay, uh, mods that the mod maker did not recommend, but I do have installed, are MechJeb and Crew Manifest. And I'll show you what the importance of Crew Manifest is later. Okay, but with MechJeb, we can bring out the Delta V stats. Uh, so you'll notice first stage burns for 1 minute and 35 seconds and has a Delta V... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, oh, that's interesting that the vacuum time is actually different from the atmospheric time. Huh. Okay, anyway. Uh, 2,450 meters per second. And then the second stage for, uh, burns for about 2 minutes and that has... Uh, oh, I'm looking at vacuum Delta V for some reason. Okay, it's really a mix of these two that you should be looking at. Uh, well, this one for the first stage and this one for the second stage is about right. So, you'll see that we get to just short of orbit with these two stages, and then really the third stage provides a circularization burn. Uh, so you'll get into space on these two stages, but then you'll have to circularize with the third stage. Um, Timing, I, I don't have an ascent profile for this, so timing it will be a little bit tricky. But otherwise, so the stages uh, sort of have a different timing to them. And of course, that's because Kerbin is so much smaller. There's no way you're going to have a six minute second stage or anything like that. Um, and then the third stage is relit to provide a transit. Now, there's no engine igniter, so we don't have to deal with that particular issue. And you'll see some of these interim stages. Uh, those are important, and we'll see how they work later. And there's the escape system command module and the lander tucked in here. And we'll see how all of this works. I guess the best thing to do would just be take this monster out to launch pad. And, uh, and yeah, fire it up. Okay, so here we are on the launch pad with the big three. And I remember something. Okay, so I haven't actually brought this to uh, a landing on the moon or anything like that. But one thing I discovered was that there was a staging issue. Uh, if I ignite this seventh stage here, things go wrong. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think this is wrong. So I think this fourth stage should go here. I might be wrong about that. Let's, let's actually keep it default. 
And then if I mess up, we'll, we'll retry it. So I'll try it this way, the way it is in the default craft file. And then we'll, we'll see how it works. And if it all goes awry, you'll get a second uh, Saturn launch. I'm going to use MechJeb's Ascent Guidance so that I can play around with, with just looking and enjoying the view. So we're going to set orbital altitude to 80 kilometers. We're going to have an ascent path of 60%. Okay, obviously I already tested this out. Um, I'm gonna let it auto stage, uh, auto warp, corrective steering, and all that. Uh, prevent overheats is important. Actually, the the first stage does overheat, uh, and so does the second stage. Uh, you actually have to throttle back. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll use uh, I'll do it manually the first time. Uh, actually, uh, so let me uh, disengage some of those features of. Yeah. Okay, first time on the video I'll do it manually and then maybe the next time I'll do it because I, I think there'll be a next time with the way things are configured right now. Next time I'll do it with uh, automated guidance. So uh, SAS on, throttle is up and uh, let's drop the GUI for a bit and launch. Now that's a beautiful plume. Okay, uh, the... the Rockets on my little Saturn V don't produce that nice little plume, and I'm really jealous. So, so yeah, I, I want to look at the configuration files to figure out how I might get this onto my Saturn V. I'll have to see. If somebody's got a hint on that, please tell me. Now, obviously, this is uh, built for Kerbin, so it wouldn't work with... Uh, what you got, uh, the realism overhaul stuff, not as it currently is. And considering the the quantity of fuel in the stages, it would have to get the serious makeover to work with realism overhaul. Okay. Oh, here we go. Mm, I think uh, this should be enough to prevent the overheats. And yeah, the engines will just uh, disappear if you keep it overheating. We're... Saturn V wise, we're overdue for the gravity turn in Kerbal Space Program, we're not, but we might as well do it. I, of course, didn't have uh, hull cam installed on this version because I was going with the middle amount of mods that seem to make this work. So the mods I mentioned uh, I think are really minimal if you want to play around with this. Let's go IVA, right? Ooh. So I haven't actually seen this IVA before. Uh, I, I usually use the RS... Uh, the MFD, the RSI multifunction display. Um, okay. Oh, I can't really read that info. Uh, okay, what's that beeping? That sounds like a warning beep of some kind. I better jump out for a sec. Let's get this to a better orientation. Okay, staging is interesting, because first we do have a separation. And then we've got the realistic light of the second stage. With the ring falling off like that. So if we do put a camera on there, you'll get to see that uh, classic image of that ring going off. I'm just going to keep the thrust to where it is, because it'll prevent the overheating. As you can see, overheating has already started. I'm just going to keep to this view to make sure that the overheating is not going to do anything bad. But you can look at the detail on this. 
clearly some time was spent on it. I'm sort of feeling guilty about not paying attention to whatever is beeping. Very nice. Okay, let's go to IVA and see about this. Uh, this is Jeb's IVA. There doesn't seem to be any warning lights there. I, I, I want to see a big right red light flashing somewhere. Doesn't look like it. Oh, info, Jebediah Kerman. Mass, our vehicle mass, not Jeb's mass. Uh, anyway, uh, I see. Very detailed. Okay, let's jump out of this. I think I should get rid of the the escape system. The escape system, you can get rid of it, jettison it by pressing 1. It's an uh, action group to that. Oh, or maybe not. Huh. That had worked before. So I'm not going crazy here. That, that did work before, but it didn't work this time. I'll have to check up on that. So in version 1.1.1, that thing just went off without a hitch. Uh, okay, decouple. No, that's not what I wanted to do at all, is it? Is it? <sighs> anyway. We needed to get that off because otherwise there's no docking possibility. Let's see what our situation is. Now oh, that beeping is really heavy over here. Okay, who's responsible for this? Maybe it's the overheating. Uh, is there any way we could look in here and see what's going on? There is this red light. Oh, a fair warning, a lot of this thing is clickable even if it, uh, the cursor doesn't change. That isn't. But there are things that you can click that might do things unexpectedly. So we've got apoapsis and periapsis here. I guess I can look at it from here. Uh, or pitch is here. Would like a nav ball though. Where's our nav? Uh, should we have a nav ball? Yeah, there it is. Oh, oh. Okay, so that's that uh, stage. And uh, I, I think it was the beeping was overheating. Okay. Well, let's uh, take a look at the separation, of course. All right. Look at this beautiful stage. And I think we lost that cone thing. Okay, good. All right. That thing fell off, and we are on our way. So uh, it works with TAC Life Support. I think uh, the thread said something about uh, IVA having TAC Life Support displays. I. I don't know. Oh, okay, we can just configure it like that. Target management, the altitude. Oh, we've got this, okay. Okay, well, don't quite see that information, but maybe it's in here somewhere. 
Okay, I think we're, uh... Uh, this isn't the display I want. Uh, where's our orbital information? Okay, no, we're not there yet. But our app apps is going crazy, so let's hold off on this. Okay. Let's add a maneuver to... Obviously, this is not how Apollo did it. Don't get at me for that. Radio maneuver. Let's bring the apoapsis down and periapsis up and... Where do we have to be pointing to get this done? Okay, overheating. Okay, so that beeping is overheating. If I shut it off, it's fine. All right, so we're we're in orbit. We're in good enough orbit to be getting along with. Let's just plot for our lunar transit. That doesn't look too bad. Okay, so we'll go with this one. Center and 18 is fine. Let's take the exterior view. Wow, it's still pleasant. So we have to relight this third stage to get us to the moon. I'm not going to do... I, I don't know the order of operations, whether uh, the docking... I, I think the docking happened after the third stage did its second burn. The images on the on the thread for this mod had the whole docking maneuver happen before the third stage did its second burn. And that's... I'll, I'll have to look into that and remember. I've definitely got the resources to find out, but I just... Um, I just always preferred it to... I preferred to do the third stage burn. I mean, why, why would you have the command module flip around and dock with the lunar module before the third stage has run out? I don't think that would make any sense. But that's just me trying to use logic in place of actually knowing the answer. So, but anyway, we are turning and we are time warping Oh, uh, I think, well, anyway, this has a fuel cell, or was it, the yeah, the service module has the fuel cell. Let's turn the fuel cell on, just so we get to electric charge. It doesn't look like we have any waste from the fuel cell or any limitation on it. Oh, no, wait, uh, maybe not, no, no, I think it'll be fine. So you can see tack life support, food, water, oxygen, and all that. Plenty of fuel. Not much by way of lights, by the way. And I always suspected this. I, I never expected people to put a whole bunch of lights on the outside of a craft. So I guess this is realistic. Okay. I think we should start burn now. Again, beautiful flame from this one. Nice structure to it. Uh, I guess we can IVA a bit. So, right now we've got... Uh, this must be Bill and Bob because Jeb is in the other seat. Hanging out here. Nice views. Uh, yeah. How much longer do we have? Okay. You can see the Delta V left in the burn here. Oop, we've gone too far. Uh, I'll accept that for now.
we'll adjust as we get uh, closer. All right, so here is the tricky part, right? I don't know the order of things. I think I think I opened the flaps, these guys. Now I have to figure out how to undock the... This is the service module engine in 3. And that's the lander. If you look over this LEM button, that says 4. The LEM docking cone doesn't have a D couple thing. Again, I'm, I'm figuring some of this out as we go, obviously. I'm going to try... try this seventh stage and hope that it's the right one. But I think it worked better when I took that over here. I'm gonna have Mechjeb, uh, Smart ASS, keep us prograde so that everything's oriented uh, together. It's no good having things flip around in all sorts of directions as we lose control of them. Okay, throttle is down. And... Okay, that's that. So if I... Can I pull away? No, I can't. And I'm still attached to it, see? So whatever that stage was, it didn't separate me from the lunar module. What it seems to have done seems to have separated this can from this. So the ascent stage from the descent stage. Anyway, so what I think should happen is that that stage that was up there in slot 4 is the one I actually wanted. But actually it does this. Hmm. So, oh, oh, so that, that uh, stage 7 was actually this little cone. Okay. Then what the heck was connecting the command module to the lunar lander? Well, actually, you know what? We 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 can we can solve this problem. We're not the ideal situation, but we have one trick at our disposal that the astronauts did not have. We have time warp, putting things on rails. So. That stops that from spinning. And I'm going to just have MechJeb help me out here. I shouldn't be using mod prop so flagrantly, but okay, thank you, MechJeb. Take our CS off, SAS on. Okay, let's move forward. Let's get. Uh, So yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out the staging on that part too before I actually try and do a legit reenactment or anything like that. But aren't these models beautiful? Uh, the lander especially will get quite a good look at. Lots of detail. Chase cam is disorienting me again. I don't usually use it, you see. Okay, not the... no, 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 no. What the heck is going on here? Oh, why? Here I said I was gonna do it right, and look at this. This is not... why is it... it's like going inside of it. That's not nice. It's very strange. Okay, SAS, you must be doing this. This is icky. Hello, let's, let's, let's back away from this situation here. Uh, it's not being very friendly. 
We seem to be in a weird tether. Somewhat connected to it in a way, but not docked to it. Huh. Well, this is unpleasant. What am I going to do to fix this? Uh, rails, maybe. Aha, ha, ha. Okay, that, that did something. Always trust Kerbal Space Program's peculiar brand of physics. Okay, I'm officially declaring that this is not working out this time. Ooh. Stop that. Maybe we can have smart ASS. Oh, well. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't usually use MacJib for this sort of thing, but I'm just... Okay, that... Oh, stop that. I'm at my wits end. Okay, so yeah, control from here. Choose a target to dock with. Yeah, this, this guy. Uh, target is not a docking port. Great. Okay, well this is going terribly awry, so... Boink. So let's revert and try it the way I think I was able to do it. Uh, yeah, at least in previous versions. Let's, let's, let's go back and try this once again, and this time do the restaging that might not be correct, but at least worked. So, yep, revert to launch. Actually, seeing the vehicle on the launch pad, it occurred to me that I wanted to check what's up with the action group to dump this. Oh, see, this only had, uh, wait, let's decouple as well. Huh. Okay, so I think now the escape tower will jettison properly. Now, let's see. I want... I know this is probably not right, but I think it will work. So I'm going to restage it like that. I'm not going to save it, though. Let's launch. Okay, let's get rid of this junk. I, I guess we could uh, go full cinematic on this one this time. All right. So throw those up. Uh, actually, let's bring that back and make sure SA is is on. And well, let's get uh, there. We go. Uh, maybe the train will clip if I do it that angle. Okay. Not bad.
Oh. Okay. Well, there you have it, folks. The overheating. <clears throat> so, yeah. <sighs> yeah. All right. Yes, we lost the engines due to overheating. And probably the... Well, the first stage seemed to go out legit. So maybe it didn't actually overheat uh, to extinction on that one. But yeah, we're not getting the space system. Let's uh, revert to... Uh, yeah, revert to launch. And then I'm going to... I'm just going to have Jeb do it so that we can... Uh, well, yeah. Let's have Jeb do it so that I can... Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I don't really... Well, I don't really trust MechJeb, but maybe it's for the best. Alright, prevent overheats on a stage. Let's increase the post to two seconds at least. Uh, I'm gonna skip auto warp. Corrective steering is fine. Alright, so uh, let's run up and launch. Yep. Launch and engage. So let's see how MechJep decides to do it. We're uh, here with uh, Jeb. Maybe Jeb's view is not the best view. Let's see now. Uh, that's a little bit better. Let's get our info up. Now oh, there's that beeping. So we know the engine's overheating, but Megchip's just gonna have to take care of it. Oh, there's the little island runway. You can see it from here. It can be seen. Well, not from space. We're not at space yet. Okay, that's the separation, and there's the second stage lighting. So, second stage is a go. As we pass over the island runway. Okay, at this point I'll jettison the escape system. There it goes. And I've freed up some of our view now. Some more of our view, I should say. Just taking a look at some of the settings for the multifunction dis display. So it looks at it like it has its custom multifunction display. Uh, so probably installing the RSI MFD is not a good idea. are steadily climbing. I don't see what our fuel situation might be. Okay, well, sounds like something has happened. Oh, I guess Megchip thinks we should coast to Apoapsis probably. Let's see. Um, don't see apoapsis there. Uh, oh yeah, our apoapsis is at uh, 80 kilometers now. So we must be coasting to apoapsis. Technically the second stage should have burned out. But, uh, well, uh, no, let's, uh, let's go out. And let's see. Oh, we've still got a tiny bit left over. Okay. Okay, that's the end of second stage, separation, and third stage. Uh, I guess we didn't need very much from the third stage. So we're in our circular orbit, 80 by 80. And uh, not much to look at right now. 
as far as what's outside the window. Let's jump back out here. Yeah, it's nighttime and everything. Okay. Kerbal Joint Reinforcements Stabilizing Physics. And let's point ourselves at the node. I think we can start our burn. Oh, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, why is the delta V going up? Well, obviously we are pointing in the wrong direction, but why are we pointing in the wrong direction? Why is it showing our node in the wrong direction? Uh, oh, this isn't our node at all. But I see a blue marker here. Is there a blue marker on the other side as well? Uh, it shouldn't matter. I should just point prograde and burn. Yeah, I was looking at the wrong blue marker. This is not... This is one of those advanced nav balls, isn't it? I hate that. Okay. Uh. There we go. Oh, we've got overheating on this stage, too. Okay, let's see what our situation is. Wow. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Let's see now. No, that's worse. Figures. Okay. Alright, uh, we'll take that for now. We'll make adjustments as after we separate. Even though we've got a lot of fuel in this stage, I don't feel like doing a retro burn with it. Let's get the GUI up. Let's have these uh, move out of the way. Okay, so let's try this again. I'm going to assume that I have to do this. I've changed the stages to the way I, I think might work. So let's do that. Okay. So far, so good. Uh, will RCS pull me away from the lunar module? Yes. Good. That's definitely an important step. Right. And this time, instead of the way it was originally configured, the lunar module isn't flying away in some random direction. Oh, okay, now it is. Oh, and now it's all jittery. Okay. Um, so that's why I wasn't able to dock with it. It was it was being like that. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, well, this is still something in the works, folks. <laughs> Lunar module. Okay. We're going to get into... Uh, you know what we're going to do? We are going to do Apollo 8. <laughs> We are going to go to the moon, we're going to get into orbit, we're going to do some science, and we're going to come back, okay? Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't show you the internals of the lunar module, but and they are very good, by the way. But I still clearly need more practice with this mod. Um, I don't get how the staging is supposed to... Oh, let's get the fuel cell on. Our oh, electric charge is depleting. There are notes about how to put it together, so if you don't want to use the pre-built craft file, there there are notes about how to assemble the parts together to make the Saturn V. But I didn't really see operations manual of any kind. Okay, and that looks like a fair maneuver. Gotta throttle down just in case we're overheating. Oh, 
Okay. Periapsis 26.5 kilometers. That's good. Still no sight of the moon. Let's jump out of here for a sec. Oh, well that's interesting. We've got uh, sort of a eclipse on the way and the moon is also in the dark. So at some point I'm probably gonna have to do a video reenacting the the Apollo mission properly but before that I'm gonna hope that we can... what are these things? Okay they're just... anyway I'm I'm gonna hope that we can get better uh, better decoupling. <laughs> Uh, I have a lot to figure out with this thing, but you can see it's a lot of fun to play with and a delight to look at. But before we get all all in wrap-up mode, I want to actually go home. No, not that way. We'll have to jump to map to see how close we're getting. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh, stop, stop, no, map, out, oh, stop, stop, stop. Uh, apparently in map view, uh, I didn't, I not only didn't have the GUI up, but I didn't have this thing. And of course, if you don't have this thing up, you can't control the engines from this view. Huh, okay, well, while I'm still in this view, let's correct this situation. Good thing we seem to have an overabundance of fuel. Of course, we were supposed to bring the lunar lander into orbit as well, so that would have taken a little bit more fuel than we used. And clearly we missed at least one part of that functionality. Well, docking with the thing we... oh. Okay, well, yes, I was a little bit worried about the food now that you mention it. Um, I wonder... oh, he's looking sad, isn't he? wonder why there wasn't only, only that much food. It's not quite a lot of food, no. Uh, four hours? I think they can survive on, uh, without food for four hours. I would certainly hope so. Alright, but still strange yes yes I know food depleted how long how much longer two and a half hours well you know some airlines you know right uh, have their passengers go without food for two and a half hours right okay so what's our staging look like well let's get rid of all the ones that we don't need I'm gonna hope that the rest of this is actually configured right. It's possible that, I mean, the craft file probably was configured right, I'm just missing something. Entirely likely with all the, all the little crazy functions that are involved. Well, let's make sure that there's food and everything in here. Well, not food. Water and oxygen. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I don't see what else we can do. Uh, okay, I'm gonna trust that I have to press spacebar again. That first press did not do anything. Alright, that's off. Heat shield, very nice. Very nice. Okay, we are definitely coming in for some sort of landing. Okay, I've paused here. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Come on, come on program. So, as it happens, my program froze right when we were on re-entry so it saved it in this state the the automatic quick save 
left us in this situation. So what I'm going to do is rather than go to the moon and do everything, I guess I'm running out of time here, I need to do other things and this video is already getting long. I'm going to try the docking one more time and I'm not going to take us to the moon. I just want to show the interior of the lander. And I think we'll be good on that. Let's get into the light. Now obviously with crew manifest I could just I guess I guess the most straightforward thing would be to let's let's send one of them into the lunar ascent module. So let's have Jeb move over into the ascent module. Take portraits. Uh close that. Alright. Now let's see. Okay, um, start. Oh, maybe that's not a good thing. Oh, okay. I was hoping to get just the lights on, but I guess that is a thing. Alright, uh, how do we get the lights on? Is this the lights? Ah, that's the lights. Okay. But I pushed start and start did something completely different. What did start actually do? No, not that view. This view, um, start, started, okay, so we've got the command module here with Bob and Bill, then we've got Jeb in here, how do we get the cowling to can we do that anymore? No? Uh, it looks like uh, Jeb must be still connected to this thing, so if I press gear... I would think this whole thing would open, but it doesn't. Uh, yeah. Okay, no, that's not the gear I wanted. No. So we can't quite get this the fairing off, and uh, fairing open I should say, not off. So once again I'm doing everything wrong here, but, but let's, let's see about this. Um, oh no, maybe, aha, okay, 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 all right. Now what's our situation? It looks like the command module is actually smashing into the lunar lander. Let's, let's have it move forward a bit. Not very good angle. We're uh, butt end to the sun, so... Okay. Let's forget this idea. So, what was... which which Apollo mission was it that did the docking around, uh, around Earth? Is that 9? Forget. Anyway, uh... Yeah, so we're doing that one, whichever one it was. And so... But actually, this should be still attached to that, I think. The lunar... Lunar modules should be... Still attached to the third stage. But... While we're here, we're here. Let's turn around. Gotta slow it down a bit and see what it looks like from in here. Well, you can sort of see the third stage there. This is definitely not the view I'd want to be in to dock with the thing, though. And, well, let's not take it. Uh, nobody would have been in the limb at this point. Surprising that the program froze on re-entry. That I've generally the program does not freeze. I've uh, I've haven't had that happen. Uh, usually it happens on startup because of RAM. I haven't had that happen during the game. Maybe once in like a uh, hundred times or more. So that was strange.
Okay. It's doing that shoving itself too far in thing again. Oh, is it always SAS that's messing up with me? Okay, this... Now, I swear, I've docked these things together in 1.1.1. And it was fine. And I did it with the staging as I had described it. But this time... I keep getting this little pogo thing. Not pogo oscillation, it's just the fact that it's being like a slinky here. I don't get it. Is it just because of SAS? Because I've been having SAS on? It sure wants to pull me in. I'm using uh, RCS to... Oh, finally! Holy moly! So, uh, the key is to resist and for some reason target is now some crazy thing so let's let's hold off on that yeah so apparently uh, back away full force and break the slinky seems to work all right anyway so here's the lem and we still got the cover that's supposed to come off so let's decouple that okay uh yep uh, let's let's uh, give it a little bit of a tilt so that we can get a uh, good look at it with the sunlight And we can uh, deploy the landing gear individually. It's got lock suspension as well. You'll see that there's landing legs with ladder. Oop. And the landing legs with the sensor that detected uh, when the LEM was approaching the ground. So, okay. I think we can use SAS at this point. Yeah. So it's got a little sensor probe at the bottom there to detect the ground there. I trust that doesn't have a collision thing, otherwise the whole limb would be tipping over on landing. Okay, let's take a look at the IVA view from Jeb's point of view. So this is the limb's interior, very nice. And you could see that, uh, so start apparently got us to decouple from something. And this turns on and off the lights. The rest of the buttons, I have no idea what they do. I mean, engine arm. Well, these don't, uh, don't toggle. This one does, though. I don't know what it does. That one toggles, so... Ooh. Huh. That's suspicious. And so it's sort of a... Well, if you want to look up what all this is about, I think uh, this is your chance. For now, I think I've got to do some basics like figuring out how to actually decouple them from from third stage properly and docking them together properly. So I'm not going to jump to all the fancy bits. Now we we made sure that we weren't headed for the moon this time, and I'm going to transfer Jeb back, and we're going to try that uh, re-entry one more time. So we're going to decouple from the Lem after putting ourselves on the descent trajectory. Let's raise all the landing legs now. Let's see, this has a light that can light up the limb. It's just that the command module for some reason doesn't uh, have any lights of its own. I mean, lighting of its own. Oh, I forgot to update portraits. Okay, probably we don't need to do too much more than that. And let's hope we 
Get into some good waters. I think we can decouple the lem now. Decoupling the lem is a little bit tricky. Not decoupling, undocking the lem. And as you can see, it's just this tiny little docking cone. Once everything is stable, let's back away from it. Okay, we're starting to hit the atmosphere. We might not hit water this time. But I'm just worried about whether I'm going to get a glitch or not. So that's my priority. Let's dump the service module. If I can. Ah, there we go. Not too sure what all of this is now. Got uh, those are probably the LEMS rockets, not the rockets on here. And the LEM is still in physics range. It's gonna be complicated. Okay, we're re entering again. Looks like more or less the same spot where I glitched out last time. Let's try and take it without time warp this time. Maybe that's a problem. Okay, well, let's see what re-entry looks like IVA. I've been taking Bill's seat. Not very dramatic so far. bit of flames tickling the front but of course we're uh, oh uh, well it looks like uh, Bob's view is a little bit more no once we actually get there but of course we're we're on the sheltered side right we're over here here so I guess it's not that dramatic oh we might hit water after all so I guess this is the parachute cover and the docking mechanism, so we need to uncover the parachutes. And I guess the heat shield falls away? I didn't think the heat shield would, but... Oh well. Okay. I guess parachute deployment, right? Yeah. SAS off. Huh, very interesting. Let's see what they look like when they open up and everything. Okay, there they are, opened up. Nice safe speed for. Oh, and flotation devices. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, flotation devices barely keeping the top of this above the water line. Oh well. Anyway, uh, there you have it. Uh, it looks like uh, we've done some sort of a weird combination of missions in this episode, but. I think you got the idea. You've seen the details of the OLDD Apollo mod version 1.2. I'm sure there'll be further refinements over time, but it is pretty impressive as it is. And I hope to someday to actually bring it to the moon properly. All right. So on that note, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.